Hey everybody, happy Wednesday and welcome to the On Deck Podcast presented by Line Star. I'm Shannon Somerville. We'll talk to Tyler Weeman in just a bit to go over some daily fantasy projections as well as some prop bets. But first things first, we've got some weather conditions to get to. So if you're playing in daily fantasy, if you're placing some prop bets, here's some conditions you want to keep an eye on, especially for these late slate of games. Taking a look at the Blue Jays at Yankees game. Good conditions here. 705 is first pitch, 65 degrees cloudy, 1% chance of rain there with a light breeze, just six mile an hour winds from right to left. So overall weather, not much of a factor at Yankee Stadium. Brewers at Orioles, 77 degrees at first pitch at 7.05, cloudy, 1% chance of rain, light to moderate, nine mile an hour winds that will be blowing out to center to improve those home run chances slightly, but keep in mind, I told you yesterday, they did move those fences back 26 feet this off season, so keep that in mind, it's not as optimal as in years past at Camden Yards for those home runs. Mariners at White Sox this game. Keep an eye on this one. Likely a rain out. 7-10 first pitch. 63 degrees, showers and thunderstorms all day. 39% chance of rain. And 10 mile an hour winds right to left if that game is in fact played. But look for a postponement or a delay at guaranteed right field. That's a look at your weather report. Now we bring in Tyler Weeman to go over some of our daily fantasy projections. But before we do that, you may notice that Tyler is not, in fact, wearing an Aaron Judge jersey as yesterday on the show. If you watched, (laughs) you would know that I had insisted that he would have to wear an Aaron Judge jersey had he gone oppo taco yesterday. He did not, in fact, go oppo taco on Taco Tuesday like I had hoped that Aaron Judge would. So you're in the clear for that, but don't worry. I have that sh- medium size jersey <laughs> ready to go in the cart for the, you know, the saved for later items. Uh-huh. So that's on on deck. So we'll have to pull it back out again uh, later this season. We've got a lot of time to get to it. So I yeah. see you in Aaron. Jo- I see you in pinstripes before the end of the season. <laughs> you're going to be wearing the Padre <laughs> brown and gold. Bring it on. All right, let's bring on our daily projections and talking about our chalk report and looking at some of our starting pitching just for the night games. Now, we only have four games on tap. One of them's got some weather like I just talked about. So the highest owned right now, what are we looking at? We're looking at Corbin Burns for the highest owned pitcher. He's 55%, and it totally makes sense. I mean, he by far is the best pitcher on the slate. He has the highest combined K rate on the slate. My only cause of concern with him is his walks. Over the last five starts, which goes into last year, he has averaged walking four batters for nine innings. And in his first start of this year, he walked three batters in five innings. So there, he may be having a little bit of issues with his command, but that would be my only concern. Outside of that, he's yeah. a great pitcher, great matchup. Cy Young winner. Can't go wrong there. Exactly. Uh, 50% owned A's righty Frankie Montas going up against the Rays. Now, there were some trade rumors swirling around him, so I'm sure uh, everyone's going to be interested outside of the daily fantasy world just to see how he does. Absolutely. I mean, it's pretty obvious that Oakland wants to trade him and Trade everybody they can. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But Montas looks great. He has a second highest combined K rate on the slate at 25%. His ERA over the last 20 starts was 3.02. You really can't go wrong with him. The other thing is that on DraftKings, he is only 6,900. So that is going to be really hard to pass up, Mm -hmm. especially if you want to pay up for some expensive bats like the Yankees or Toronto. So taking a look at one of our more lower-owned pitchers, Shane McClanahan, what do you like about his matchup today? So he has a decent matchup, but he is a very good young pitcher, and that's really what I like about him. He only has a 3.11 ERA over the last 20 starts. However, today his combined K rate is only 20%, so it's not that high on the scale compared to some of the other pitchers out there, but Oakland's office can't – Oakland's – offense can be beat uh however he did not fare that good against them last last year although he did have a good outing um four and a third scoreless seven strikeouts um so we'll see what we can get from him but like you said young guy kind of don't know what you're getting out of him but if the price is right it might be worth it 
uh, Jose Barrios, Toronto. We got a Toronto righty at Yankee Stadium. What do you like about Barrios in this nope. matchup? So Barrios is extremely low owned, probably coming in only around 10% or so. And on a slate that, that it's this small, which it very easily could be only three games, 10% is extremely low against the Yankees team that likes to strike out. Do you think that's because people were a little scared off of his first start? He kind of he didn't even make it out of the inning, but lots of nerves and stuff. But we do know he's a good pitcher. I, exactly, and that's exactly why I think he is coming in so lone. Last year versus the Yankees, he does have a 28% strikeout rate against him, which would be the top of the slate. So there is the upside there. However, again, it's risky. Mm -hmm. Every guy in the Yankees lineup can hit a home run. Yep. Especially the lefties, which plays well at Yankee Stadium. So, hey, no risk it, no biscuit, though. So exactly. Barrios might be a good option for you guys playing Daily Fantasy. Now let's take a look at some top stacks for today. Yes. Of the night games, where are you going with the top stack? So I'll start out with Seattle. I don't want to talk too much about them because the game does likely get uh, yeah. postponed. However, if they don't, I think they are in the best spot against one of the worst pitchers on this slate. So I'd absolutely be going there if it plays. But make sure you stay tuned to the weather and see sure. what that looks like. And then the highest on stack may be, in fact, the Yankees. Now, yes. looking at this matchup is really intriguing from a daily fantasy perspective because, you know, you like a lot of these hitters, mm -hmm. right? But um, what are you looking for in terms of the Yankees from a stack perspective? So the Yankees do look like the highest own stack. Again, like you said, Berrios had a rough, rough first outing. So that's a, probably a big reason why people are looking to go that way. Personally, I don't think I will be going that way. Partly because of the leverage that I could get on the field. Right? Sure. The easiest way to win a daily fantasy match or contest is if most people fail, you know, you have an easier path to first. Sure. And that's a good point to make yeah. in these. I mean, you know, with Daily Fantasy, it's not only that you're just trying to get the highest score, you're trying to beat the other people in the contest. Sure. So easiest path of victory would probably be fading them or fading one of the high-owned pitchers and hoping they fail. And in line with that, let's talk about the low-owned stacks now. So you're really high on the Brewers today. Yes, the Brewers are definitely my favorite team for today and I may be using them in a home run call and a prop bet. In the well, business we call that a tease. Stay <laughs> tuned, kids. But John Means, if the Seattle and White Sox game gets canceled, John Means is absolutely the worst pitcher on the slate. He has a five point one nine FIP over the last twenty. And Milwaukee will have the most implied runs on the slate. And Toronto also a low owned stack. Interesting mm -hmm. there given everything we just talked about. I, absolutely. And the thing is, they're going against Garrett Cole, mm -hmm. who historically he has been a terrific pitcher, but ever since he had a little spider stack issue or attack issue, uh, he's been a little more inconsistent, and Toronto was able to beat him up at the end of the year. So it is a risky stack because you don't know which Cole you're going to get. Sure. But it could pay off big. Yeah, definitely. Now it's time for our home run calls. Quite simply, who's going to go yard tonight? And congratulations first, because you got one right yesterday, Nolan Arenado. You've been crushing it lately on the home run picks and the prop picks. But for tonight, who's going yard? Tonight, I'm going back to the Brewers with the great Hunter Renfro. I had to throw in the great for uh, our good old line star chat there. So what about you? What are you thinking? I am thinking... Anthony Rizzo. Like you mentioned, Berrios was a little shaky in his first outing, so we're not mm -hmm. sure what we're going to get from him. I'm liking Anthony Rizzo, lefty bat, going up against a righty at Yankee Stadium. He's got a 500 slugging percentage against Berrios in his career. Um, that's 12 at-bats. Not a huge sample size, but one home run against him as well. And he's got two home runs already this season. And Berrios was a little shaky out there, so I'm, I'm wondering if his nerves will have settled uh, playing at Yankee Stadium again today. And last year, even when he was playing great, his 474 slugging opponent uh, percentage to left-handed bats last season is gives me a little bit of pause, but also gives me a little confidence. 
for Anthony Rizzo's chances today. So I'm going Anthony Rizzo with a bomb in the Bronx. Prop bets. We have been crushing it three for three the last couple days. So mm -hmm. today we've got to continue the streak. NBA Jam rules. We're on fire. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so where are you headed with your prop pick for today? Once again, just beating up on Baltimore, going back to the Brewers with Willie Adamas for over 1.5 bases. It's plus 105. And I'm going to just stick with Rizzo for all the reasons I just mentioned in my uh, home run call. Uh, over one, over a half for total runs. That's at plus 125. So some good value there as well. So really, I'm picking on I'm picking on Toronto today. Home run gives you both. Let's like go. It. Let's yeah. do it. So those are our prop bets for today. But we have one more thing I want to get to, and that's this tweet of a five-leg parlay that looks pretty insane. So I guess the question here is, are you cashing or are you just gonna, gonna keep riding it out? What do you think? What would you do? So the uh, five-leg parlay is a $10 wager to pay out almost $960,000. The first two legs was North Carolina to make the final four, which they did. Scotty Scheffler to win the Masters. Next, we have the Phoenix Suns to win the championship. Alabama. How's that one feel? I I mean, I'm going to say just go ahead and cash <laughs> before it gets there because you know the Georgia Bulldogs are, are going to defend that one. So. And then uh, the last is the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. You're in a tough spot here. The cash out. They're saying is eighty five hundred dollars if you do it right now on a ten dollar bet. I personally am probably going to wait through a round or two of the Suns. I don't think they're gonna have a problem to get through there, and then maybe cash out. Might go up to like ten grand by then. So after then the after the Suns, after NBA, after I, the third leg, you're you're out. I don't think I would wait to go championship. Okay. Cash out maybe in the semifinals and see where it's at there. Yeah. I As long as you're out before football, se college football season, I'd say go for it. But until you get to that Alabama plus 200, I mean, first of all, you mentioned uh, earlier that that seems kind of low. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Alabama is a great program, and they are always in the running, but plus 200 is so low. Yeah, that's not great value there. So I'm with you, but... Hey, if you want to be in it to win it, that's a lot of money for a potential payout. And I, I could retire. I know. That the, would be pretty I know nice. Line Star sat. Not that I wouldn't want to be here every day <laughs> doing this podcast. The Line Star chat would definitely be saying it's easy. Just go for it all. Just go for Just it. <laughs> go for the Millie. <laughs> well, for more chats and analytics and talking all about sports betting and daily fantasy, be sure to go to the Line Star app and make sure to download it in your app store and keep up with us on twitter we'll be talking all day about all the different prop bets and your best bets of the day so tune in there and best of luck to you if you're playing daily fantasy or if you've got some prop bets we'll see you tomorrow have a good one